In this short presentation, I'm going to discuss a particular case study that was presented to me many years ago, and, uh, and I hope you find it of interest. So anybody involved in, in the, the field of physical therapy, like physiotherapists, osteopaths, chiropractors, sports therapists, etc., should find this of interest. So let's just move on to the next slide. So you probably know my name. So I'm John Gibbons. I've written many books. Uh, I'm an osteopath and I tend to, to lecture quite a lot, especially in many countries. Um, I do face-to-face -face courses. This is mainly at a place called Core Elements in Swindon. Uh, and I'm actually currently writing my next book, which is on the vital spinal column uh, and should be with us uh, next year. Now, so the case study. So it was actually a male rather than a female that presented, not really makes any difference. But uh, one of my friends who was a personal trainer said to me, John, could I look at one of his um, like clients from the gymnasium because he was having some difficulty doing a particular exercise. So if you look at it, this exercise below where the patient is almost like using the dumbbells to activate the triceps and the patient could straighten the right arm quite easily but they couldn't lift the left arm. So this left arm couldn't extend like the right arm along here. I do have a video to show you because obviously looking at a picture is not the same as looking at the actual video. So this is the person in question and the video was taken. So if I just play this just to show you, sometimes it's easier to look and then you can come up with an idea of what you think is going on. So you can see that they can straighten the right arm quite easily, but they've got difficulty straightening the left arm. Okay, so you can see it's particularly weak on that side. So just watch that one again, because sometimes you need to watch it two or three times to have an idea. And then think about maybe why this could be. Okay, so why do you think this left side is weaker than on the right side. When I teach my students um, on the vital nerve course and also uh, the shoulder course, the cervical spine, so sometimes I show this video and I let the students come up with an idea of what they think is going on. And it's amazing really the ideas that um, they come up with. So it's known as differential diagnosis. And when I put on the next slide, you can see the, the variety of potential conditions that all the students have come up with. So let's maybe just go to that. So, you know, you might have an idea in your own mind of why this person is struggling to, to extend this left arm. Um, so let's go to the next one. So this is the differential for it. So let me just have a look at that just for a, a minute or so. So sometimes the students... You know, I ask, so let's say there's a group of 10 students, I'll say to them, what do you think? And some say, well, it looks like a, maybe a rotator cuff issue with the, the shoulder. And then another person might talk about the cervical spine, and they talk about C5 in particular. Someone mentions there's a weakness in the triceps, which it looks like there is. And then somebody else mentions C6 or C7. Um, serratus anterior, so this controls the position of the scapula. Um, typically, you end up with a uh, like a winging scapula if the serratus anterior is damaged, or if there's a nerve damage, which is a long thoracic nerve, which could be a C5, 6, and 7. Subscapularis weakness, okay, so that's part of rotator cuff. Deltoid weakness, you know, there's lots of weakness in here. Um, scapular dysfunction, they call it like a scapular dyskinesis. Um, the C8 nerve, people talk about the radial nerve. Um, as a group, the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus basically would come from C5 to T1. Um, so it encompasses all the nerves that supply the arm. As a break guys, the arm. Yeah, the nerve plexus here. Thoracic outlet syndrome. So there's many causes of. So that would be uh, the definition of um, compression of the neurovascular bundle. And obviously the neuro is the brachial plexus from C5 to T1 and also um, the subclavian artery. So those two structures will come through the outlet um, between the scalenus anterior and middle fibers. Uh, and then it will go underneath the clavicle, over the first rib, under pec minor, and off it goes down the arm. So potentially there's one of these, yeah, uh, where the person 
potentially has. Uh, let's just go back. Let's just go back and let's see if I can play this video again. So think about what all the students have said between them. So just watch again, okay? You know, there's one key element here. And I believe that the person is unable to straighten the left elbow. So potentially there's a weakness within the triceps. And the weakness within the triceps, you know, people say, well, the radial nerve, which is from C5 to T1, will innovate with the extensors. So the extensors of the triceps, yeah, and then the extensors of the forearm. Uh, but I didn't think it was particularly uh, an issue directly with the radial nerve in itself. I thought maybe it's like a myotome weakness. So like a myotome is a muscle innovation from a nerve root. So when you think about, say, the movement of um, shoulder abduction is mainly from C5 myotome. Elbow flexion will be C5 and C6. Wrist extension is mainly C6. But then if you ask him to, say, extend the elbow, and let me just jump ahead um, to here. So I thought it was more of a C7 nerve root issue because C7 supplies uh, the myotone of elbow extension, wrist flexion, and also finger extension. So when I tested a couple of extra things on this uh, client, and he also had weakness in those areas as well. So, so my hypothesis was this. So I believe that the C6, C7 vertebra was rotated. Uh, chiropractors have a term like, you know, a subluxation. Uh, an osteopath might call it like an osteopathic lesion, yeah, or somatic dysfunction. There's a few words people tend to use. But then if that um, vertebra is rotated, then the exiting nerve root of C7 might be compromised. And I believe that affected the C7 myotome um, the main one is elbow extension. So when I tested the patient, um, like when I asked her to push, well, him, push down the right arm, it was strong, and I could feel good activation in the tricep in here. But when I asked the patient to push, I call them patients, yeah, personal trainers, I call them clients. When the person pushed down on the left arm, they were particularly weak. Um, and you can see that back in that video. So let's go back to the video and watch again. So the person has an inability for like to extend that elbow. I know I tested the wrist, even though it's not particularly weak gripping. Um, it was weaker compared to the to the right side. So I believed there was a C6, C7 rotation that altered the pathway of the C7 nerve root. It was interesting all, but he had no other symptoms. So he just came in with a weakness. He didn't say, my neck is particularly stiff. I've got um, shooting, stabbing, pain in my arm. So it was only only noticed on this particular movement. So, because I'm an osteopath, um, I uh, performed a high velocity thrust to the cervical spine on the left side in here, around the C6, C7, and then I retested the power. And then when I retested, I do not have a, an after video to show you, but um, when I retested the power of the arm, as in the C7 myotome, it was back to normal function. So um, that's what I did. But, um, you know, it's interesting to see what a lot of the students. The problem is, is, you know, obviously it relates to a lot of experience. And if you've seen many of these before, and a lot of chiropractors in particular will do like myotome testing because they test the power of an area, which is obviously innervated by the nerve root. And then that would then relate to the, to the area. So, for instance, if you are testing, um, like I showed you, elbow extension, then the chiropractor in particular wouldn't think it's a tricep issue. They would look at C7 in particular. It's like the ankle, you know, if you've got a weakness of, say, dorsiflexion, uh, where you're looking at, say, tibialis anterior, they might not look at the muscle per se. They might consider it's a, like an L4 issue. So they'd look at the L4 nerve root within the lumbar spine. Um, so let's just move on. Okay, so just to confirm, I thought it was a C6, C7, vertebral rotation affected the C7 nerve root, and the myotomes were affected, in particular this C7 on the left. Um, I saw that gentleman in question about six months later, um, so I only saw him a couple of times, and as far as I'm aware, he doesn't have a problem. Um, so the treatment was very relatively straightforward. I might have done some soft tissue techniques first around the neck, but it was mainly for an adjustment of that level. And then when I retested, the power was back to normal. 
And then when I referred him back to the personal trainer, he was very happy because he could then commence um, normal training. So there we go. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the talk. If you have any questions, then feel free to, um, to ask. Thank you.